high. In this example, I would provide a sample code for processing vector field data, specifically for calculating the gradient and curl of a vector field. Okay, so this is a very short code. Uh, so uh, we read the same test data that we read in the previous test case, and we define the output file name we'd like to save our results. And uh, you know, one thing that's useful in BTK, this type of coding is that you, if you have large a, a set of data files, you can easily loop over your files and automate your data processing. So this is how the way I've set up this code is that it loops over number of files, capital T that you specify here. In this case, I only have one file, but if you had multiple files, you could have, you could uh, loop over them and save each of them separately or save them all in one file. And uh, that's really, really useful uh, for automating data processing. Okay, so let's say we loop over all of our files. In this case, just a single file. We define the file you want to read. So, you know, we have an input file name. We convert the index to string so we can append that to the file name. So depending on how our files are stored and add .vtu or if it's vtk.vtk and define the file name for every, you know, uh, every uh, step or every time step or every case, and then load that. In this case, we're loading with vtk XML unstructured grid reader. And so we define this, we set the file name, we update it and we get the output and I store it again uh, into a data structure called date. Okay, so now that I have my data structure data, I can do things to it. So in this case, I'm going to be working with the gradient filter. So I'm going to define vtk .vtk gradient filter, give it this name, set the input data that I want to apply this gradient filter. But in this case, it's going to be data. Set some options, define the array uh, name, the resulting array name. In this case, I'm going to call it gradu. So when I open my file in Pavi, I'll be able to access the gradient of the velocity, which is going to be a tensor or a three by three matrix for a 3D vector field uh, as gradu. And then you can set compute vorticity on. So if you set this option, uh, you will get the curl of your vector field. So if your vector field is velocity, which is the case in this example, it's really you're getting the vorticity. So I set all these options and then I update my gradient filter. So it executes it and then get the output and call it data grad. So now I have commented this out here, but this is for you to see if you take this data grad structure, you can convert it to NumPy like the last example. It's a, it's theoretically, it should be a second order tensor or a three by three matrix. You know, when you take the gradient of a vector field, you get a second order tensor, three by three matrix really. So it has nine components, but the way VTK stores it is as a, a you know, it's as if it's an eight, uh, you know, it's like a vector that has eight dimensions. So when you get this Walsh says, this, um, gradient vector, or whatever you like to call it, for every index i, so the index i that you see are the different uh, points in your mesh, for each of them you have zero, one, or eight different uh, components to your array, and these are you know, the different parts of the three by three uh, gradient matrix. So the first ones so I've commented here what each of them are if you need to do certain processing. So for example, zero is partially partial X, one is partially partial Y, and so forth for all the gradients, okay? Okay, then what I do is that I write my results. I call VTK XML data set writer, call it my output, set what I'd like to write, in this case, the data grad that I've created, give it a name and set the file name with this name that I've specified here and write the results. So then I can load my results in Pavu. So if I go to information, I have two things added. I have vorticity added. So note that I didn't set the name for vorticity. By default, it will call it vorticity. But for the gradient, I had the option to set that and I call that grad u. So this is the gradient, grad u, that you can see. And it's we're looking at the magnitude, or really magnitude in this case is the L2 norm of the matrix, uh, or really the Euclidean norm. Uh, and then uh, you have all the components. So, so you can see by clicking these nine components, you can get the different parts of that three by three matrix. Or you can also do uh, look at the vorticity. So if I select vorticity, this is vorticity field. And you can see it's 
vorticity and volume stress are pretty much a scaled version of each other. So at the wall, vorticity is just a scaled version of vorticity magnitude is just a scaled version of uh, volume stress at the wall. So the scaling factor there is discussed. Um, and if you like, you could you know do a slice and do your data, and you can click on vorticity. So you can see the vorticity field here. So you know you can see the region, the bound layer, that region of high vorticity, and so forth here. Okay. So uh, yeah, so this is just an example for you to see how you can process a vector field data and calculate the curl and gradient of a vector field. 